Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. Signaling the end of summer, the school year opened with the Simsbury Teachers Convocation on August 25th, where it was announced that Georgia Austin Central School Kindergarten Teacher has been named Simsbury Teacher of the Year. The children arrived two days later on August 27th. There were some noticeable changes for parents and children. In addition to new principals at Latimer Lane and Central Elementary Schools, there was an entirely new online registration procedure for current students. Called InfoSnap, it's designed to replace the mountain of paper forms parents and children had to fill out in the past on the first day of school. When high school students arrived for the first day, they found workers resurfacing the red material that makes up the track. After that, the track, which is made up of rubberized pellets, needs what is called a deep regrooming. The work is expected to be finished by September 19th in plenty of time to be ready for the opening home football game on September 26th. And the Board of Education, which has not met over the summer, is resuming regular meetings on September 9th. They can be seen right here on SCTV, Comcast Channel 95, and UVerse Channel 99. With the end of summer, the pace of activities has picked up in town. Septemberfest at the Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center is, as usual, the first weekend after Labor Day. It starts Friday, September 5th with fireworks and includes three days of children's activities, musical entertainment, lots of food with 20 local area restaurants, a business expo, a town tent, and many local organizations on hand. Hope to see you there. Simsbury's huge used book sale is on Saturday and Sunday, September 6th and 7th at the Simsbury High School gym. When the doors open on Saturday, an estimated 50,000 items will be available for purchase. That includes children's books, CDs, DVDs, puzzles, and games. Of course, not all the books get sold. The remainders are donated to an organization in Bridgeport called the Green Team, Greater Bridgeport Community Enterprises, which provides work for the unemployed. Many books are donated to state prisons. The book sale is run by the Friends of the Simsbury Library, which uses the funds to support many of the programs at the library. The Friends have announced that they have a bus trip going to Boston on October 8th. The tour will include a visit to the newly renovated Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, lunch at the historic Union Oyster House, and a visit to Faneuil Hall Marketplace. The bus leaves at 8.30 from Stop and Shop and returns around 5.45. The price is $80, which includes everything from museum admission and lunch to snack and beverages on the bus. You can make reservations at the library by September 29th. Lots going on in the children's room this fall for parents and young children. Once Upon a Story Time with Mrs. Moody has returned on Mondays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Children love her. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m., there is an informal program of stories, rhymes, and songs for babies from birth to 23 months old. And on Thursdays at 10.30, there is a drop-in music and movement program for two-year-olds. In addition, on Saturday, September 13th, from 10.30 a.m. to 11, there will be a drop-in family music program for one to four-year-olds in the Discovery Room. Music on the Lawn is scheduled for Tuesday, September 16th at 11.30 a.m. with music provided by guitarist Mike Markowitz. You should bring your own picnic lunch and blanket. If it rains, it will be moved indoors. For more information about library events, you can check their calendar on their library website and keep your eye open for their redesigned website coming soon. The weekend of September 13th and 14th will be packed with things to do in town. The Simsbury Grange Annual Agricultural Fair is on Saturday, September 13th in West Simsbury. There will be contests with ribbons and cash prizes for adults and children. In addition to agricultural submissions, adults can enter 
baked goods, and home art projects like quilting, sewing, and knitting. Children can also enter Lego creations and two-dimensional art. To fill out an entry form, you can go to their website, www.simsburygrange.org. Also on September 13th, don't be worried if you see even more bikes in town than usual. That is the day of the East Coast Greenway Alliance and the Farmington Valley Trails Council 58-mile bicycle ride from New Haven to Southwick, Massachusetts. All the bicyclists will be stopping for a picnic lunch at the Simsbury Performing Arts Center. And speaking of biking, the Simsbury Parks and Rec Department has two bike classes coming up. On Saturday and Sunday, September 6th and 7th, there is a class on the fundamentals of mountain biking. Participants will meet at the Town Forest parking lot. The cost is $179 per participant. For details, you can go to the Park and Rec site. A Biking and Traffic Skills 101 class will teach skills and safety for the road and multi-use trails. That's being held on Sunday, September 14th from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. It will also include a group ride, crash avoidance techniques, proper lane and intersection positioning, and much more. It is being held at the Apple Barn and costs $65. All participants must bring their own helmets, and you can register for either course on their website at simsburyrec.com. There's another interesting event on Saturday, September 13th. This one is at the Simsbury Free Library. Here's Sarah Hart to tell you more. On Saturday, September 13th at noon, the Simsbury Free Library will offer its fifth program in its Simsbury Free Library on Simsbury series. Fred Feibel will give a talk about the lost village of Pilfershire. Located in present-day West Simsbury, Pilfershire was a tightly knit and thriving farming community in the mid-18th century. Come learn more about Pilfershire, how some of our earliest settlers lived, the homes they built, and the old cellar holes and remnants still visible today. This program is free, but space is limited, so we recommend that you contact us to reserve a spot. Don't forget about the annual Simsbury Women's Club Annual Arts and Crafts Fair, which is on Saturday and Sunday, September 13th and 14th on Iron Horse Boulevard. Leslie Kirkwood has more. One of the largest and best attended arts and craft shows in Western Connecticut will be held September 13th and 14th on Iron Horse Boulevard in beautiful downtown Simsbury. The event is the Simsbury Women's Club's 45th Annual Arts and Crafts Festival and over 120 juried artists and craftspeople will be participating in the event. There will be landscape, seascape, still life and portrait artists and photographers fine and costume jewelry crafters, artisans who handcraft soaps, lotions, and other personal care products, clothing designers, potters, blown glass artisans, and many other talented artists from around the Northeast. Hamburgers and hot dogs, home-baked items, and beverages will be available on the festival grounds. There will also be an antique car show sponsored by the Valley Car Collectors Club. Admission for the event is free, and there is plenty of free parking in lots adjacent to the festival grounds. The festival grounds will be open 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days, rain or shine. Most of the funds the Simsbury Women's Club earns through the event are cycled back into the community through donations the club makes to local nonprofit organizations that focus on the betterment of the lives of others and the betterment of the environment and the community at large. The Simsbury Women's Club's 2013 earnings were donated to the Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance Association, Keep Simsbury Warm, the Farmington Valley Visiting Nurse Association, the Simsbury Commission on Aging and Disability, and the Simsbury ABC House. Also, two academic scholarships were awarded to two qualifying Simsbury High School students and a third scholarship was given to an adult woman already enrolled in a college or university. The club also made donations to Hartford homeless shelters like My Sister's Place, Interval House, and the Salvation Army. For more information about the event, send emails to swc-artsandcrafts 
at yahoo.com. Not only will there be antique cars at the Arts and Crafts Fair, there will also be old cars that same weekend at Simsbury's annual fly-in and car show. The largest event of its kind in New England features up to 700 planes and cars of every type and vintage, plus family activities. This year, it's on Sunday, September 14th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Bill Thomas has more. Hi, I'm Bill Thomas with Simsbury Airport, and this is an invitation for you to attend the Simsbury Fly-In and Car Show on Sunday, September 14. This event has become like a very special kind of country fair. In addition to displays of over 700 airplanes and cars of virtually every type you can imagine, we'll have many other attractions for your family's enjoyment. A fife and drum corps demonstration, live Celtic music, flying radio control models, many local craftspersons displaying their wares, Ben & Jerry's ice cream, Lifestar, and much more. We're the largest event of its kind in New England. Everything you want to know about our event, including our schedule, directions, and contact information, is at simsburyflyin.com. It's a great way to spend a fall day in the outdoors. See you then. Even though summer is over and the town pools have closed for the season, there is still plenty to do outdoors in Simsbury. We have 10 municipal parks, 40 athletic fields, and lots and lots of hiking possibilities, as Jerry Toner, the director of Simsbury's Culture, Parks, and Recreation Department, told Althea Graney in an interview for the Simsbury View on SCTV. You know, we've got just wonderful trails in mm -hmm. town and as you were saying you know probably in the time you've been here you probably haven't seen all we have i think if you started you know between you know our open space areas and and uh mclean game refuge we were talking right. about earlier um the state parks mm -hmm. um you know if, if you started uh, you know hiking um you know today you'd be hard pressed to get you know really to get them all it's it's it really so much and there's they're they're just great great areas and um uh you know, so I think it's really one of the real assets, you know, that the town has, just the variety and the diversity of the, you know, the parks and the open space areas. At the urging of local Simsbury resident and SCTV volunteer Phil Kushan, a very popular game finally came to Simsbury this summer. It's called pickleball. As Phil explained, it's a racket sport which combines elements of badminton, tennis, and table tennis. After a slow start, it really took off at the ice skating rink at Simsbury Farms. They started showing up until here, eight weeks later, we have a nucleus of about 36 people Fantastic. who are coming kind of regularly mm -hmm. to play. Very good. And you play Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays? We play Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoon from 3.30 to 5 o'clock and the time just flies. We don't have any age restrictions. Uh, mostly we've been getting senior citizens, 55 and above, okay. retired people, uh, we had one young lady uh, two weeks ago who came and thought she'd like to try it and uh, found that it was, it, it was fun, but it wasn't quite for her, and she was 92. Okay. Okay, and yeah. I was kind of glad that it wasn't for her because, you know, I didn't want her breaking a hip or right. getting, getting injured. I don't want anybody getting, getting injured, but right. uh, especially at that age. Right. But she was a marvelous woman. The Simsbury Police Department recently received a prestigious honor when they were awarded National Kalia Accreditation. Captain Nicholas Bolter told the Simsbury Board of Selectmen that the accreditation process included a meticulous on-site inspection by a two-person Kalia team in March in addition to continuing their detailed document examination, the team from Virginia and Georgia 
inspected the police facility and rode along with police officers. Just a couple quotes from the assessors. Uh, Chief Goodman said the assessment team concurred that the accreditation standards are well woven into the professional fabric of the police department. The community should be proud of its police force. All agency members showed exemplary teamwork, cohesiveness, etc. Uh, Lieutenant Coons said the best property and evidence inspections and audits I have ever seen as an assessor. It was a pleasure working with a department that truly serves their community. You really have something special in Simsbury. Some very, very positive feedback from, from the assessors after spending so much time in our files and meeting our, our public, meeting a lot of the town employees. They actually spoke with many people in town. We organized uh, people to come in and speak with them and, and speak, you know, freely speak their mind and let them know what their concerns are, what they've seen over the years, uh, what they see as positive and they see as negative. And it was very, uh, very positive. Only 13 Connecticut municipal police departments and 400 municipal police departments around the country have been accredited by Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. The accreditation lasts for three years. The Board of Selectmen has voted to continue the summer hours for Simsbury Town Hall offices and Eno Memorial Hall. For this foreseeable future, Town Hall and Eno will open at 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. The closing hours vary. On Monday, Town Hall will be fully staffed and offer full services until 7 p.m. On Friday, Town Hall and Eno will close at 1 p.m. All other days, both buildings close at 4.30. This does not impact the police department. Whether you have lost a spouse, a child, a friend, or a close associate, McLean offers bereavement support groups to help. Bonnie Lillis, who has been a hospice spiritual and bereavement counselor at McLean since 2008, has more. The act of grieving can be a very isolating experience as frequently family, friends, and others are ready to move on with life much quicker than you may be. If you're experiencing this, perhaps we can help. My name is Bonnie Lillis, and I am the bereavement coordinator with the hospice program at the new McLean. We offer bereavement support groups to those who are grieving process their grief with the company and support of others who are also grieving. These groups provide grievers with normalization and validation of the common issues that occur in grief as well as offering ideas to help reconstruct a new meaningful life. These groups are facilitated by master's level counselors and are offered at no cost to you. We have groups running in three locations, a spousal loss group at McLean and two groups for any type of loss that run at the Senior Center in Simsbury and the West Hartford Senior Center. If you would like more information or would like to register for one of these groups, please call 860-658-3950 and ask for a bereavement counselor. We look forward to helping you through this very difficult time in your life. There is just under a month left to decide to go solar with the Solarize Simsbury program a town and state supported initiative that gives discounted solar energy installments to homeowners. Simsbury Public Works Director Tom Roy and Mickey Toro, the owner of SeaTech Solar, the company which has been selected to do the solar installations in Simsbury, say time is growing short to sign up for the program. Hello, I'm Tom Roy, Director of Public Works with the Town of Simsbury. Today we wanted to take a few minutes to update you on the Town's Solarize Simsbury program where we've been working to increase the amount of residential solar um, applications here in the Town of Simsbury. I'm here with Mickey Toro from SeaTech Solar and we're happy to announce that this program has been absolutely fantastic for the Town of Simsbury and since May, SeaTech has gone out to over 500 different homes who've been interested in solar on, on their properties. Um, to date, they've had well over 40 individual homeowners sign up for the program and the amount of solar to date that we've been able to put on homes is roughly equivalent to removing or to adding 
15 acres of trees, it would be the equivalent to reducing the amount of miles driven by 21 million miles. So that's, that's basically what you get from just 40 residents. We're hoping in the next month before this program ends to actually more than double that number. And I think Mickey's going to talk a little bit about how the program normally works, where unfortunately everybody waits to the last minute to sign up. Mickey? Yeah, and actually uh, it, it's actually 150 acres of trees that have 150. been planted. 150. Not 15, but 150 acres that have been planted uh, due to the 300 uh, KW that we've signed up in residential homes. So I wanted to make that point. Yes, I, I wanted to, to also express uh, my excitement about the success of this program. As I've said in the past, I am a resident of Simsbury. It is a great uh, program for our town. We uh, have seen a lot of folks. We have uh, sent out a, a many proposals, over 400 proposals, and we have over 40 people that have signed up. But one thing that I wanted to make sure I stressed today was that most people, we have about a month left, and in our, in our past, we, we've done about seven or eight of these towns uh, programs. In the past, people wait till the end. So the last two weeks is crazy. So we, we tend to see uh, up until this point, at, at least what we've already signed up. So another mm -hmm. 40 is sort of the trend uh, or more, but that will happen in the last two weeks. And the reason why you really don't want to wait is because it, it, it you know, incentives change. Um, we don't want to miss getting your application in, obviously, but we also don't want to have uh, you be last on the list or in the back end of the list of the people that, that are in the, on the schedule to be installed. So it's really advantageous to you to get your, if you're interested and willing and ready to do it, to sign up as soon as possible. It makes that, a lot of sense to do. That's great because we certainly want to see everybody uh, getting the benefits of the solar power during the, the end of the summer and late fall when the energy production is going to be at its highest. Correct. Yes. And I think that also something to remember is when we, if you can get signed up in the next, um, you know, rather than wait a month, in the next week or two, you, uh, you get a better chance of getting installed uh, before the winter. And, that, the, and when weather starts to change, it could change scheduling and installation uh, dates. So in order to take advantage of the tax credit uh, this year, Yep. You want to be installed this year, so that would be great. That's another benefit to doing it. Right, and the tax credits and the incentives are a huge part of this program, and I think it would be great to have all of the viewers realize that we have one more presentation where we're going to go through the whole program, and that's going to be in September. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that, Mickey? Sure. On September 9th, we'll have our last workshop. We've had a few in the town already, uh, but we'll have uh, our last workshop that will explain the whole program, how it works, why it's a benefit to you. We'll also, as a detailed part of that, that uh, program will talk about the financing options, which is a very important part of this process. Um, in most cases, folks can go uh, green and go solar without any money out of pocket due to some of the mechanisms that we have for financing, whether it be a loan uh, or a lease. Um, but uh, there's many options, and we want to make sure we go over those during this uh, September 9th program. And having been to a number of these workshops myself, I can tell you that as, as daunting as the task seems, you go, they're going to explain it, they're going to work it through. Um, all of the ins and outs and answer everybody's questions. I think um, September 9th is a great event for anybody who has not already participated. For those of you that have taken the time and have proposals, now's really the opportunity to sign those and get them in so that you can get your system up and running. Yeah, and that will be at Eno Hall on September 9th. If you miss it, SETV cameras were there for both solar workshops earlier this year. Watch both solar workshops in their entirety online at simsburytv.org. Use the word solarize in your search to find all of those related videos. The Farmington Valley Visitors Association annual meeting is coming up on September 15th at Farmington Gardens. The highlight of the event is the announcement of the first ever Farmington Valley Awards. Voting is ending on September 5th for residents to choose your favorite hotel, outdoor adventure, golf course, historic site, and shopping areas. In addition, they will give out awards for the favorite pizza, casual and finer dining, as well as coffee. RSVP by September 10th by calling 860-676-8878. Tickets are $5. Numi Fitness uses a fusion of non-contact martial arts movements and traditional exercise to lose weight and gain strength and fitness. Simsbury resident Mike Layupa believes Numi Fitness is a way to present the physical, 
physiological and psychological benefits of the martial arts. Here's a way to try something new. This featured segment offers one of the many aspects of the Numi Fitness approach to better health and fitness levels. Hey folks, it's Mike from Numi Fitness. Today we're working the core with two advanced exercises, one from the high plank and one from the low plank. We use a lot of our core in the martial arts and these exercises are a great way to cultivate strength and inner stability. If this is new to you, it may be quite challenging initially, but don't be afraid of it. We can only improve our bodies by challenging ourselves. Otherwise, we plateau. So if an exercise ever becomes too easy for you, try to find a safe way to make it more challenging. For these exercises, we need to eliminate some friction between our feet and the floor. So if you're on a rug, use furniture sliders or some cardstock like I have here. If you're on a hardwood floor, you can simply wear socks. For both exercises, we're going to keep the furniture sliders or cardboard underneath the balls of our feet. We're going to maintain good breathing. We don't want to hold our breath during these. The first exercise is going to be in high plank. So I'm going to have my hands directly below my shoulders. I'm going to lock out my core. Draw your navel into your spine. Tighten your glutes. Tighten your quads. Now I'm going to inhale, and as I exhale, I'm going to slide my feet up toward my head into a pipe position. Now if you're more advanced, you can also do this in a low plank. Just make sure you keep your elbows underneath your shoulders. Our next move is a little more complicated, a little more challenging. It may put some stress on the elbows, so be very careful with it. We're going to start in a low plank. So our elbows directly below our shoulders, locking out our core as we did before. Hands or palms down. We're going to roll ourselves forward up onto the palms of our hands. So we're going to chaturanga here. Back to low plank. Back to chaturanga. Maintain good form. Keep your hips in line with your shoulders and your ankles. There you go, two advanced exercises you can use to spice up your routine. Try them out, have fun with them, and if you have any questions about this segment, contact me through newmefitness.com. Thanks for watching. With decreasing local news coverage, SCTV is the best place to turn to find out what your local government is doing all the meetings which keep you informed about your town government and decisions that are being made that impact your life are recorded by volunteers using remote camera equipment where the controls are almost but not quite like playing a video game. If you would like to volunteer or sign up for free training to learn how to operate the remote cameras at Town Hall, you can visit us in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall you can call us at 860-658-1720 or email us at simtv at yahoo.com. Join our team of volunteers. We would love to have you. You can find the government meetings on Comcast Channel 96 or on Uverse Channel 99, and you can also follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government.